Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the last week of Lockdown Family Devotionals in the book of Exodus. We started way back in chapter one and we're nearly done with the whole book of Exodus. It's been great that you could join us. And if you joined us for every single day, well, well done to you. Make sure you let us know. We'd love to talk with you about what you've been learning and what we've been learning. It's been awesome. Now we're finishing not quite at the end of the book, which I know sounds a bit weird, but we're leaving the two sections of instructions that we talked about last week and we're dealing with what happened in the middle. What went so wrong? Well, in chapter 32, we hear what went wrong. Let's have a listen. Chapter 32, verse 1. The people saw that a long time had passed and Moses had not come down from the mountain. He's still up there talking to God and God's giving him all his instructions. So they gathered around Aaron. Remember Aaron? He and his brothers are going to be the priests. They said to him, Moses led us out of Egypt, but we don't know what's happened to him. So make us gods who will lead us. So Aaron said to the people, Take off the gold earrings that your wives, sons, and daughters are wearing. Bring them to me. So all the people took their gold earrings and brought them to Aaron. Aaron took the gold from the people. Then he melted it down and made a statue of a calf. He finished it with a tool. Then the people said, Israel, these are your gods who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Aaron saw all this and he built an altar before the calf. Then he made an announcement. He said, tomorrow there'll be a special feast to honor the Lord. The people got up early the next morning. They offered whole burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. First, the people sat down to eat and drink. You see, God's people are about to make a big mistake. Do you remember the one job they had? The thing that God keeps telling them over and over and over and over again? that he is the Lord their God, that he brought them out of Egypt, that they will be his people and he will be their God. He says it time and time again as this repeated promise. It's almost like the chorus of a song that keeps coming in throughout the song. It's the thing that he never wants them to forget. It's the first commandment, that he is the Lord their God. And what's the second one? That We shall have no other gods but him. Two gods is too many. But God's people get distracted. I wonder if you've ever had this problem where you've had one job to do. Just one thing that seems pretty simple, but it ends up really tricky. And the longer you have to wait, the harder it is to remember. Just this morning, I popped on a load of laundry and in my laundry, because it's it's pretty old and run down and our machine's not very good, we have to do one thing before we put on the machine. One very important thing, make sure there's nothing in the laundry sink. Because if there is, we have a history of flooding our laundry in inches and inches of water. It's a bit of a mess. So our one job before we put on the laundry is check the sink. And like so many other times before, I just forgot. And so this morning when I walked back in to hang up my laundry, the whole room is full of water. Now, that was a bit of a disaster and it meant I had to spend the next hour cleaning up. But for God's people, well, this is a much bigger mistake than just not forgetting to check the sink. They have forgotten who rescued them, who has saved them. In fact, It's almost like they haven't forgotten, but they're gonna put their thanks into something they've made, into a golden calf of all things. Gold that's been melted down and built into this statue. That's what they've chosen to worship. And we could think, oh, silly Israel, don't they know better? Don't you remember God rescued you from Egypt and parted the Red Sea and did all these amazing things? He brought food from the sky and gave you water in the desert. How could you worship anyone but him? But we're kind of the same as the Israelites, aren't we? We forget to do our one thing, don't we? To love the Lord our God with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our might and strength. Unfortunately, we aren't much better than the Israelites because Jesus went to the cross. He gave us the biggest picture of how much he loved us. And even we forget it sometimes. So we're going to spend a whole family church this Sunday reading this passage and learning more and more about what it means. But to start us off, 
One simple thing to remember is, remember the most important thing. It's God who saves us, not anything else. And anything else we put our trust in, well, it's just not going to be as good as our God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a God who has always saved your people, that you saved them out of Egypt, that you save us from our sins when you sent Jesus to the cross. We thank you so, so much that you never fail to save. And God, we pray that we won't forget like the Israelites, that we won't get distracted, that while we wait for Jesus and the longer that it takes for him to come back, that we won't worship other things and we'll make sure we stay focused on worshiping you only. Help us do this, Lord. We need your help. Thank you for the example of the Israelites so that we can know what it looks like and be warned against it and keep following you and only you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.